moment right now. This is this is pretty special to watch. I mean, can you even imagine? I can't. Really, he lost one of his children in that dreaded 2 a.m. phone call. And honestly, I, I can't believe he's playing tonight. I really can't. Sure, football is just a game. But in reality, it's so much more than that. The NFL has saved lives, changed lives, and has made a lasting impact for the good, and in some cases, the bad, too. We're going to show you the most emotional moments in the NFL and the chilling stories of the players involved, both the heartbreaking and the heart-saving. This is The Gridiron. Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams started his career in Green Bay. He was never a touchdown machine. Combining his rushing and receiving touchdowns, the most he ever had in a year there was six. He soon moved on to the Lions, and in 2022, Williams lit it up. He couldn't be stopped. He was scoring touchdown after touchdown. He wasn't just surpassing his season best. He was closing in on a Detroit record. The most rushing touchdowns a Lions player has ever had in one season was 16 by the legend Barry Sanders. Entering the last game of the season against Williams' former team, Williams had 15 touchdowns, too shy of breaking the record. The Packers would get into the playoffs with a win. The Lions were already eliminated from the playoffs, but they wanted to beat their rivals. They wanted respect, and Williams wanted that record. In the game, he rushed in on a short yardage play and tied the record with 16 touchdowns. Later in the game, Williams got another opportunity, and he capitalized. He got that 17th touchdown of the season and set a new franchise record. In his post-game interview, he revealed there was a lot more going on. When asked about the record, Jamal was moved to tears and said, uh, My great-grandfather died on me. I'll just dedicate this to him. I'll just proud. I'll just grateful to do this for him. That was an incredible moment for Jamal, not only to break the record, but also to dedicate this major moment to his late great-grandfather, Brock Purdy. A few years ago, no one knew the name Brock Purdy. The 49ers already had Trey Lance at quarterback, and he was supposed to be the future. They also had Jimmy Garoppolo as insurance. Brock Purdy was not only third on the depth chart for the San Francisco 49ers, he was drafted dead last in the NFL draft, Mr. Irrelevant. But the strangest series of events happened in the 2022 season. Trey Lance went down with an injury, then Garoppolo stepped in, but later on, he went down too. Brock Purdy was forced to step in mid-game, mid-season, and then in the following week, he made his first career start against Tom Brady. The odds were stacked against him, but Purdy showed everyone just who he really was. He was picked last in the draft, but he shouldn't have been. Purdy was wheeling and dealing in that game against Brady and the Bucks. He threw a dime to Christian McCaffrey in the second quarter to put the Niners up 21-0. The fans began chanting his name. Purdy's parents couldn't believe what they were seeing and became emotional in the stands. Their son, Brock Purdy, had cemented his unlikely right to be the 49ers quarterback, Kurt Warner. But an even better rags to riches story would have to be Kurt Warner. What's worse than getting drafted last? Not getting drafted at all. In the 1994 NFL Draft, that was Kurt Warner's reality. He did get signed by the Packers afterwards. However, he was quickly cut from the team. He wound up working in a grocery store as a bagger, making just five and a half dollars an hour. It looked like Warner had missed his chance. Eventually, in 1998, he was called up by the St. Louis Rams to be their backup, and that was just what he did for a year, played backup. He only saw action in one game that season, but in the 1999 preseason, Trent Green injured his knee, and Warner was named the starter for the season. People certainly had their doubts about Warner's ability to lead the Rams. He was just bagging groceries a couple years ago. But Warner reached into his football bag and pulled out every single trick he had. He was phenomenal that year. Over 4,300 passing yards, 41 passing touchdowns, highest in the league, and only 13 interceptions. Not only did Warner win the MVP in his first season as a starter, he led his team to the Super Bowl, and they won thanks to his go-ahead touchdown bomb to Isaac Bruce. Kurt Warner went from the grocery store to the Super Bowl and became an instant St. Louis hero, Torrey Smith. In Torrey Smith's second year in the league, something horrible happened. He found out the morning of a big Sunday night game against the Patriots that his younger brother was killed in a motorcycle accident. A younger brother he looked after and helped raise. A younger brother he was a father figure to. 
Torrey went to be with his family, but he told Coach Harbaugh that he would be back for the game. It's a tough situation to deal with, but some players still want to be on the field during a tragedy to focus their energy and to dedicate performances. Maybe Torrey Smith's brother was there with him that night because he had a career game with all he was going through. Experiencing this massive loss, Torrey went out and put up huge numbers. Six receptions for 127 yards and two touchdowns. His contributions were crucial as the Ravens barely managed to win the game right at the end of regulation, 31 to 30. A career game for his younger brother, Al Davis. Al Davis was a legend in football and for the Raiders. He introduced the Raiders' signature black and silver colors. Al Davis was the head coach for the Raiders, he became the general manager of the team, and he became the principal owner of the franchise. Al Davis built the Raiders into one of the most dominant teams in the NFL. Simply put, Al Davis was the Raiders. When Al Davis passed away on October 8, 2011, Raider Nation was hit hard, and there were still games to be played. In fact, immediately after Davis's death, there was a matchup against the Houston Texans. The Raiders knew they had to do something special for Al Davis. They knew they had to follow the motto of Al Davis himself. Just win, baby! They fought hard all game. It came down to the end. The Raiders led 25-20, but the Texans had the ball. Seven seconds left, and they were lined up on the five-yard line. The Raiders just needed one more stop. Schaub took the snap and scrambled. He tried to make something happen, but the Raiders picked him off to win the game. Al Davis must have been smiling from above. Sean Taylor. Sean Taylor was an amazing safety for Washington. He impacted the game in so many ways. He improved each year. In his third season, he made the Pro Bowl. His career and his life were right in front of him. Taylor was making money most people can only dream of. However, that was a problem because people get greedy. Four people decided to break into Sean Taylor's house one night. Four people that Taylor himself knew. They were armed with rifles, and they went for his safe. Taylor heard the noises and went to investigate. As he approached the robbers, he was shot in the upper leg. He was rushed to the hospital, but he was losing blood too fast. And on November 27, 2007, Sean Taylor passed away. In their game against Buffalo, Washington wanted to pay tribute to Sean Taylor and show how much he would be missed. They lined up with a 10-man defense, one man short. The franchise would forever miss Sean Taylor. The play will always be remembered, as will Taylor. Damar Hamlin. In a game with all sorts of playoff implications, the Bills and Bengals were going head to head. It wasn't that far into the game. The Bengals had the ball and Damar Hamlin made what looked like a routine tackle but he collapsed on the field. His heart had stopped. No one had seen something like this happen in professional football. Medics rushed to the field. Denny Kellington was the one who administered CPR. Once they were able, they transported Hamlin to a hospital. The game was canceled, not postponed. Far bigger things were at stake here. A man's life hung in the balance. People didn't know what would happen. If he would make it, regain consciousness, would he ever get back to who he was? But in a miraculous fashion, Damar Hamlin made a full recovery. He even found himself back on the field playing games again. Damar actually returned to doing what he loved and what almost killed him, playing the game of football. Something he wasn't sure he'd be able to do again. Something he will never take for granted. To some, it's just a game. To others, it's more than life. It's an extremely physical sport but it's also filled with tons of emotion, and players remind us of that every game.